so based on a little bit of testing, I have a feeling that these symbols are supposed to correspond to numbers. And to learn their values, I think you're supposed to fight them out against each other in this arena. Which takes a while, i found. And what I've deduced so far, the bird symbol appears to be greater than any of the other ones so far. Even like some of these combinations like the triple moon or the man with the moon or the double man symbol. It's like beating, it's like, it's not losing any of these battles. The wind symbol I think is the weakest, which might correspond to that value being zero. The circle also appear the circle appears to be pretty weak, but not as weak as the wind. The circle beats the wind. So I might be able to say that the circle like the wind is probably value zero. The circle The circle thing, whatever that is, is probably a value of one. I'm not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. The flower appears to be somewhere in between. So, I'm not sure what that value is. The moon value also appears to be pretty... Pretty low. But not as low as the circle, I don't think. Like a single moon. And then there's a lot of other symbols. Now, the biggest problem is I'm not... I'm not 100% sure exactly what to do with this information. Because see... Like, I can tell you that those bird symbols represent some kind of large value of some sort. The flower is some kind of medium value. The man is... The man's? I'd say man's probably like halfway on the scale. the flower is stronger than the man and I could sit here for a while and do this and I think eventually I'd be able to work out some sort of this is greater than this chart the problem with those kind of situations is like once you get past about five variables it starts getting harder to do like to visualize it in your mind and to be perfectly honest I think we're supposed to like enter a value with an equal value as that shown before us. But I don't really know for sure. This is much faster. Let me test something really quick. Nah, not that's not it. So to be brutally honest, I'm <laughs> once again... Oh, new? Oh, there's new. What is, what is this? There's something else we didn't check. Oh, there's a new chapter. The alien civilization that created this transporter utilized 13 symbols. Each one representing a number from 0 to 12. Ah. Okay, see this is very helpful. Cheat sheet is very nice. So when you have two symbols next to each other, that represents them being multiplied. Three is them also being multiplied. So that's actually really helpful. Like, I know what that means. I figured they would be added, not multiplied, but that's, that's useful. So... I've basically... I've got to find out... I've got to find out 13 characters. I know one of them for sure. And I'm hypothesizing on a second one, which isn't exactly great. Question. What? So they want me to find out if I can figure out what the answer to all of these are what the answer to all these symbols are, which is kind of where I'm stuck at at the moment. I know that's zero. I'm pretty sure the circle is one. 
pretty sure. And I'm, I think the moon isn't a very high variable. The bird's the highest, I'm almost positive about that. Because so far I hadn't had a loss from that. I didn't check every symbol, mind you, but I checked a lot of them. That doesn't give me any, like, partial answers, which I was kind of hoping for. I know that'd be a little cheap, but I was hoping for partial answers from that. I could go back and just continue to check all the rest of the symbols. And I'd prefer to do that. I've got some time. I'd prefer to do that over just immediately going in line. So let me try it a little bit more, I guess. Oh my god, I think I figured it out. I think I did. <laughs> I had to organize it into a big timeline thing, kind of like those things that you see on the SAT, if you're familiar with that, um, where they say so-and-so is faster than that, so-and-so is slower than that. It took longer because I had to do it like each one at a time, but... And what, what you end up running into, you run into... I found a couple, like, milestone points, if that makes sense. Like, you know that this, the wind thing is zero. I knew that. And I found out that the circle thing was one because nothing else, everything else is stronger than the circle thing. Uh, this uh, thing right here. And so then I started organizing them, okay, you know, like for the flower, like, okay, these items are weaker than the flower, but stronger than the circle. So they're going to fit in these five slots from two to six. And then, you know, these items are weaker than the bird, but stronger than the flower. So they fit in these three slots. I actually found out that, I don't know how, how I missed this, but the man and the two moons is actually stronger than the bird. But that's where, kind of where you get stuck. The puzzles don't tell you any more than that, because they only reference the circle, the flower, and the bird. But, I did start to realize that because things had to be multiplied, there's certain, like, logic, logic issues you could run into if they weren't in the right order. I realized this after a while. And so I was thinking, well, okay, so both the moon and the double moon have to be under seven. And I know it can't be zero or one. If the number happened to be three, then double moon would be nine, which wouldn't fit under seven. So I realized that the moon had to be in the two slot, which of course tells you what triple moon is, which would be eight. Um, similarly, I found out, you know, once I figured out what the moons were, I figured out that you had to get, because I knew where the man, the man in the double moon was 12. I should probably point to what I'm talking about. This is 12. And I knew double moon was 4, which means man had to be 3. You know, so... Sorry if that was really long-winded, but... Honestly... I'm absolutely ecstatic that I managed to figure that out by myself. Absolutely ecstatic. I really didn't think I was going to get that. Okay, so once you figure it out, they tell you what it is. In order to operate the nucleus, four cards must be placed on the sensor. The alien society has two methods for expressing numbers, however. By converting the number symbols displayed by the nucleus to a second format, you'll determine the correct cards to place. What? Hold on. They have two methods of expressing numbers. I can get that by converting the numbers, the symbols, displayed by the nucleus to a second format. Is the second format like numbers we use? Or is the second format something entirely different? Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, I was about to say, you better give me a hint here, because I'm going to be real stuck. Oh, this time the monitor on the machine over there turned on. We should check it out. Looks like the power is on here. 
It's likely a 3D printer. We might be able to control it using the monitor. Something's on the monitor? I think it's displaying the object it's going to make. It's a 3D printer after all. Does that mean it's going to make it now? I think so. Let's try it. Looks like something came out. So it made what was displayed on the monitor. Oh god, that looks confusing. Five Decagon rings. Each side is a mark like those cards. So what do I do with them? Something else appeared on the monitor. Is this the same thing as before? It looks a little different to me. Let's just try to make it. Well, I mean, it's got more sides, obviously. It's all done. I knew it. It is different from the last one. Try Decon... Try Decon Reels. Try Decon Reels. Four Try Decon Reels. Each side is a mark like those cards. Alright. So, what do I do with them? They're gears, obviously. And they have marked sides. Do you combine them? They've got these ones. See, the other ones have gears. These have some sort of circle-y thing. But is there a place I'd put them? Do they go in here? Pattern on the board matches the back of the cards. White bracket here as well. Okay, so that's not what we need. What about this? Let's try to put the reel. Ah, here we go. Let's try to put the reels we found into this machine. It does have four reels, so it should fit. Well, that was easy enough. And this one's got five reels, so that should fit on the bottom. Let's try to put the reels we found into this machine. There are five reels, so it should fit. It went in perfectly. Now we have both sets of reels in. Let's see if we can do anything with it. Maybe we'll figure out something. That's probably the activation method. Is like a calculating machine? So we can we can do stuff with this reel. I think the top reel is probably like some sort of calculation, like it's the answer, if that makes sense. So one times like a bunch of zeros. Oh god. <laughs> Equals all of that. So what if we take that thing we had before? What was it? It was bird. Where are the birds? Well, there's no birds on here. Because this has less sides. Turning the horizontal ones changes the vertical. Are they matching something? These are numbers, so maybe the number's being converted somehow? Converting? The decagon is 0 to 9, but the tridecagon is 13 numbers. Yeah, the vertical reels show 0 to 12. Are people still shooting fireworks out there? What is this? It's not the 4th of July anymore. <laughs> it's like almost midnight. Stop shooting your fireworks, kids. The vertical reels show 0 to 12. So interestingly... Unlike the number system we're used to, I'm realizing now, they have a number system based on a 12-digit number system. Well, 13-digit, actually. That's weird. 
I mean, it's not that we couldn't do that, it's just that no one does. <laughs> so... I'm assuming what we're... Oh, I passed it. I'm assuming what we're seeing here is displayed in the secondary way. It's bird, 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 flower, man. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. Thank you. I was about to get real confused. It's like right when you get confused, go, back, look, go look at the book again. The alien civilization lines up symbols as a mean of multiplication. Therefore, the nucleus symbols must be multiplied together to obtain the answer. I got that. What about the numbers in a column? Humanity's use of 10 as a decimal base is simply because we have 10 fingers. Which I've actually, I've heard it said before. Oh, the intelligent beings in this alternate world have 13 fingers and multiple arms. What exactly are the numbers for the other method based on? Like the number of arms they have? I don't know. But I have heard that been said. It's actually... It, the entire reason that we use the 10 number system is because we have 10 fingers. It's entirely possible for us to have a number system based on any other set of numbers you'd like. You know, say 13. Um, but, you know, it is sort of the case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's, it, we've been using it for so long that it, it, there's no sense in changing it. No, There's not a reason to change it either. You know, it really would be a massive amount of reworking. The horizontal and vertical numbers, and the other way of counting. What is it saying? It could be we need to figure out the alternate dimensions method of counting. This could be a clue to activating the nucleus? So like I said, it could be based on like their number of arms or something. Unfortunately, Without knowing the exact method that they use, it is a little difficult to figure it out, because... Normal method of counting would say, with these all multiplied together, we'd have a net total of zero. But for some reason, that didn't happen here. So I'm not quite sure why. So what if we said, you know, one times one times one times one? Completely unintelligible. No idea. So that would be 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. <laughs> the horizontal axis is 5 digits from 0 to 9. The vertical has 4 digits from 0 to 12. Chapter 4 says there are two sets of mathematical formats. Those would be the horizontal and vertical axes on the machine, then. What's different between them, though? Please, don't ask me that. I have no idea. The decagon and tridecagon reels correspond to each other. So 10 and 13. Maybe it's changing from 10 decimal to 13 decimal. And if we set a number on the horizontal axis, it'll change into 13 decimal. So that's great and all, but the problem is, is that they're wanting me to enter a number from 13 decimal into a 10 decimal counting system. They're wanting me to enter bird into a counting system that has no bird. Cause like, I mean, that's what I'm seeing here, right? We can input five numbers. Right? We've got five numbers here, so to speak. And we need to input four numbers into here. Which there's four numbers we would get from the answer reel here. 
So what I'm needing to figure out is how to enter those five digits into these five reels. I think. Oh. Okay. So, multiplying all these together gives you 27951. In 10 decimal, mind you. This is our decimal system. Which I think is a conversion in itself, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know enough about, you know, different decimal systems to really be sure on that. So don't quote me on that. But let's try entering that number into here. So we start with two. Seven. Nine. I believe that's nine, yeah? Yeah, that's a nine. Five. And one. So I think if we're looking at this right, that is what I need to enter in. Would be the man with the double moon. Double man, I'm writing all this down as I'm saying it. The pentagram and the circle. So let's try that. Oh boy. I know. Oh, oh, I guess it's because I got it right, so they're telling me. And you put that in the horizontal axis, the vertical one displayed human moon, moon, human, human, star. Oh, human, moon, moon, human, human, star, double circle. See, for some reason, it didn't click in my head to take the information I already knew and, like, multiply them all together. Kind of because I felt like that was a 13-digit number and we couldn't multiply it together, but you can. Though that turns it back into a... Or not... It's a 13-decimal number. But when you multiply it together, it becomes a 10-decimal number that we're then converting back into a 13-decimal number, which is weird. <laughs> so, it's man, moon, moon. There's that right here. Oh, that is slow. Uh, double man. There's double man at... He's behind the microphone. Got pentagram. And circle. Oh man. I I can't believe I got that right. That was so cool. Oh, I think I did it. Yeah, it looks as if you were successful. Now what will happen? I liked that room a lot. I really liked that room. Maybe just because I was able to figure it out? Possibly, but... It didn't feel impossible. <laughs> just very difficult. Don't say fine. Oh, man. No! Well, I guess we can escape now. That's true. What? Oh, that's cool, I guess. So never mind, we're stuck in here forever. Zero listens to no one.
おいはいどこだどこにいるどこかに閉じ込められているのか Did she teleport herself into deep space? 現地ができないなら何か音を鳴らしてくれ頼むファイお願いだ答えてくれ Diana. Oi, do you see that? Let's go. Hope you enjoy living together forever. Thank you. Thank you. Is Mai here? もう二度と開かないんですねあかねさんどうして一人でさあな飼育閣で何が起こったのかわからないんだ推測もしようがないわかっていることはただ一つカルロスと純平は死んだそれだけださっきのアナウンス信じるんですかもしもさっきのアナウンスが本当なら Q チームのやつらもこのようにいないことになるだが C チームとは違って Q チームが死亡した理由は明らかだ処刑されたんだよおそらく13時30分投票でなダイアナ確か君は Q チームに投票したんだったなはいでも私は分かっている君はあの手紙の指示に従ったまで Oh this is the same timeline that I started in カルロスだ Hope you feel bad, Carlos. Mazui na. Soro soro. Mazui yaku ga toyo sareru jikoku da. Diana, jikan ga nai. Issho ni kite kure. Sigma san, ittai nani o? X ドアはもう二度と開かないここにいても黙って死を待つのだまさかトランスポートするつもりですか他に方法があるというのかあります金さんを待つんですよそうすればきっと警察や救助隊が来るとは限らんどうしてほらタイムライン受験者シグマさん話を聞いてください無駄なやり取りをしている時間はない脱出するんだこの忌まわしい歴史からファイが存在する世界へシグマさん転送先は指定したこのレバーを引くだけだレバーを引いたらすぐに入力ボットへ待ってください君が行かなくても私は行くいいか始めるぞおぼいでウィゲットメイクアディシジョンウォッウィユドゥドゥトランスポート
<laughs> or do transport. Um, you know, I've been trying to go with what I always felt was the right route the whole time, so let's just don't transport. To see what happens there. Your choice is made. Did you just knock Sigma? Oh. I thought oh, don't yeah. transport was like, hey, why don't we rethink this? No, Not no. let's break the machine so we never no, transport no. again. <laughs> Interesting how that control panel is the ability to wreck the entire room like that. We could have just talked it out, Diana. We didn't have to break the machine. That's a sad way to end that. Though I'm not incredibly surprised. Seems about seems about right, I'd say. Akane never came back. Well, I'm glad we went for D team. That was a nice change. I really don't want to go to Q team though. So maybe we'll do another D team next time. Additionally, I have a feeling this video might not be nearly as long as some of the others that I'll be making and have made. Just due to how much of that I cut out of me just thinking and testing. But that being said, um, I don't know how that was from a, like a watching point of view. That might have actually been super dull. I don't know how much I'm going to be cutting out. But from a like player's perspective, that was incredibly interesting because it wasn't... Some of these puzzles kind of go over my head in the sense that they require you to be good at a certain specific kind of puzzle. Let's say Sudoku, you know, from original 999. I absolutely cannot do Sudoku. I've, I've tried. It just, it doesn't click in my head at all. So when presented with a Sudoku puzzle, I'm completely dumbstruck. I have a very basic knowledge of how, like, the game rules work. But I can't make it work in my head. And there's certain other kind of puzzles I have a lot of difficulty with that are similar to that. Namely, things that you have to... Like, the kind of things where you have to keep a lot of things in your head at the same time. I'm really bad at those, which is why I rely heavily on using the paper here. Uh, they help me with these kind of puzzles a lot. That being said, these kind of order puzzles, especially this one, which uh, normally the order puzzles go... You know, Jane is faster than John. John is slower than Bob. You know, Bob is the last one or something. And, they, they, you know, they'll give you enough hints so you can figure it out. But it's all relied upon with that. 
This one I liked because not only did you have to figure out the order of the things, but you also had to use, uh, there's some kind of gray areas because they don't tell you everything. And you actually have to use one of your other clues, you know, where things next to each other are multiplied. You have to use some logic there to sort out where the rest of them go. Like, these are spaces where these remaining things can go. How will they logically fit? And that took a bit of thinking on my part, because once again, I'm not super great at puzzles, but I was able to figure it out. And that was an incredible puzzle. I think just for that alone, if nothing else. I hope I didn't ramble too much for you guys. I know I cut out a lot, but I'm pretty sure I've rambled a lot. So I'm sorry if that happened. But I hope you guys enjoyed regardless. Thank you so much for watching, and we will continue with this next time. Bye!